if you know me at all, you know I'm a very process-oriented person. I like there to be a list of things that I can do in order to make progress in my life. I believe goals come first, knowing where you want to improve. But then when it comes to the process itself, I like having something that I can follow step by step, sort of like a set of principles, which we've talked about on the show before, but we've never really dived into them specifically. And today we're going to be speaking with a very extraordinary individual who has achieved a lot of things in their own life. And his name is Mike Kemsky. And specifically, we're going to be talking about how to transform the quality of your life using what he calls and has coined the power life principles. For those who don't know Mike, Mike is a two-time number one best-selling author and the creator of the Power Life Principles. He's one of the most relatable, down-to-earth experts in the life enhancement industry, and he has an incredible gift of taking complex ideas and philosophies and simplifying them down to a point we can all use and apply in our life. I love this part. Mike has mentored every type of person from celebrities, doctors, lawyers, to quantum physicists, models, construction workers, entrepreneurs, and even the homeless to results that have enhanced the quality of their lives in the exact ways they desired. We're going to dive into that. His work has created results from all walks of life all around the world, from losing over 100 pounds to becoming a millionaire. While his story is incredibly inspiring and miraculous, what Mike wants the most is not for people to look at him and say how great he is, but instead to look at yourself and discover how great you can become. Mike, what an introduction, brother. I'm, I'm excited to have you here. Thank you. Yeah, and let's just leave it at that. I sound so good on the walk away. <laughs> I think we take away value just from that intro, man. You've, you've, you've accomplished a lot. I mean, for yourself, I know your story, right? A, a brief glimpse of your story, which I want to dive into with you. But first of all, it's great to have you here. Second, whenever you mention that you've worked with celebrities and all these crazy people, I'm not going to ask you who you've worked with because I'm sure there's a lot that goes into that. But like, what are you helping celebrities with? Like, what are these individuals reaching out to you asking for help with? <laughs> um, they're a mess. Uh, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's the classic case of putting the, the highlight reel up front and then the, the whole messy life in the back. But that's their real life, and that's what they live with, and that kind of like uh, loneliness and pain and that kind of stuff. But you can't put that forward facing when you have, a, you know, you're an influencer, celebrity, whatever. You can't really do that. You can, you should actually, but they don't, and so they have that disconnect and that like that that the contention within themselves a lot. And so they look great, they look happy, everything's sparkly on the outside, but it's rotten on the inside. So they don't feel mm -hmm. great. So it's just it's just this battle that they fight with themselves, and and they're never at peace, really. I mean, not not all of them, but the one you know, some of them they're never at peace inside. So they can't really live a happy life. They can display one, but they can't really live one. You know. Yeah. And, you know, I think that that attests to a lot of things that we see on social media It attests to what we see when we scroll through Instagram. We see the Lamborghinis. We see the cars. We assume that these very wildly successful people are happy in their own right. And as I'm sure what you've seen with a lot of people you work with is external doesn't necessarily mean internal. Right. They're two separate worlds. And we talk about a lot of similar things here. And one thing I wanted to ask you is these people who have reached out to you from construction workers, entrepreneurs, celebrities, what have you found is the most common thing that people are looking to shift or make changes in with their life? I don't know if there is a common theme. It's I mean, there's a common theme, but the, specifically, not really. I think what it is, is people feel like there's more, you feel like there's more inside of you, you know, there's something there that you just kind of can't tap into or, or, or dive into or extract out of yourself. So people know that they have this thing, they have this ambition or desire, and they can see it in their mind and their life, and they, they want this thing, but they just, it's like a piece of plexiglass, a thick piece of plexiglass is blocking them from getting it. And they don't know what the hell it is. They don't know how to even get past that stuff. So really, I mean, it's going to sound a little bit cheesy, but um, I even have it on my thing here. Uh, what they're looking for is their own power. And, and which is what happens when people find that and these processes we use and that kind of stuff, they kind of just go, bam, holy shit, that's me. I'm like, yeah, that's you. Welcome to you. And I go live your life. It's great. So once people tap into that and kind of feel their and see their, not just feel, but see their ability to do things that they want and, and to achieve the ambitions and goals and desires and targets that they have in life, everything changes. Not like, not like snap your fingers and there's sacks of money raining out of the sky, but <laughs> the progression and their life starts to get better. And their the, the path, the journey, the game becomes fun for them. And because they're living from a place of empowerment versus constantly seeking all this crazy bullshit that's just like 
to giving their power away. So I think the theme would be that um, people don't know what they're looking for specifically, mm. but it really comes down to a, a self self empowerment. Okay. Very cool. Let, let's talk about self-empowerment. So when I asked you for, you know, I, I asked you, are there any specific things you wanted to talk about? And you're like, really anything, man. And I, I mentioned self-development and you're like, well, there's not going to be any of that woo-woo self-empowerment stuff. <laughs> so I, I feel there's a couple questions inside of this that I want to dive into. But when a lot of people hear like self-help, personal development, it's seen as this very woo-woo space, right? Oh, just think positive and positive things will happen. Think about what you want and that will be enough to bring it into your life. So so when you say woo-woo self-empowerment, what are your thoughts on the space and, and what is missing in this arena that power life principles or maybe what's real does bring to the table? Whoo, shit, that's a Pandora's box. All right. Um, <laughs> it, <laughs> yeah, you know, there, there's there's a place for everything. And the, the woo-woo stuff, to me, what I've seen over the past three decades of doing this kind of work is it, it, it just, it's a distraction. I call it a spiritual addiction because people get this, this idea of something. They see like a motivational meme or something like, oh, that thing changed my life, whatever. Really what's happening is they're looking for some way to relieve some pain in their life, some way to feel better or whatever. And this comes along and it's like a shot in the arm of this like dopamine hit, right? And then they go, uh, and like any other drug, what happens? It wears off and you stop taking it. So it's it's no different. And then they're like, oh my God, I feel like shit again. And my life's a mess. And oh my God, my relationships suck. And, blah, blah, blah. and then they look around like, oh, there's another one. It's just a shiny philosophy or something like that. But their life doesn't really change. Mm -hmm. nothing subs there's no substantive change to their life so it's going to continue to go on i see i see amazing people do this for 5 10 15 years and they're like what the hell is wrong with me i'm like nothing if nothing's wrong with you you work exactly you're designed to work but you're just in caught in this like kind of this hamster wheel this web of of just deception almost thinking that this kind of stuff's going to change your life. It doesn't. It has a function, has a purpose. It's a catalyst. It creates some some desire and some motivation and some some boost of energy to get you going, but it's just one part of it. The woo woo part is all this mystical, mythical, narnia stuff. It's like everything's just over the hill with this magic piece of fruit and this special rock and the staff of wonder and all this shit. And it's like what does that have to do with anything? So the, the 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 challenge I see is that people get so enamored by these ideas of if I can just think about stuff and it's gonna like Italian sports cars gonna show up in my driveway and I'm gonna lose <laughs> I'm gonna lose a thousand pounds and oh my god all my 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 I'm gonna get taller and leaner and oh and I'm gonna get the girl and the gold and the glory and the gut uh, whatever man and so that's kind of what uh, the the woo woo stuff to me is is just this idea that. Um, there's something for nothing. And hey, if you can figure that shit out, send it over my way because I'll push the button too. But um, <laughs> actually, I won't. That's that's not the way. That'd be boring. But um, yeah, so the woo-woo stuff is just kind of, it's a distraction. And, and it's a distraction from people being accountable for their own immense power. Not that they have, but that they are. They are this stuff, right? So, and, and it's sad to me because I see so many good people that really want a, a, a better quality of life and an improvement in their life. And they just can't get it and they get so frustrated and, and they get defeated. And the industry just takes them through this, these, these, this house of mirrors over and over and over again. And what are they going to do? I mean, that's the bet. I'm so happy and fortunate for me because I didn't learn any of this stuff with mentors and books and gurus and shit. I learned it in the trenches of life. Mm. So it's like there, there was no other option. It was like this works or it doesn't. And, and that was it. So, but anyway, the point is I'm rambling now, but the point is that um, it, it gets to the point where people get defeated and when they get defeated, um, these are real people with, you know, their moms and dads and sisters and brothers and husbands and wives and kids and bosses and whatever. And they have real dreams and real ambitions and real desires and real fears. And, and when it gets to the point where they're treated like just some kind of commodity or something, it, it just de defeats and deflates people. And that's not what this industry is for. It's not what this space is for. The space is here to help people, not take them through these rabbit holes of wonder and shit and, and get them all sparkly, hypnotized eyes. And <laughs> No, that's not what it's for. It makes me crazy because it hurts people. That doesn't help them. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think that's very well said. Now, what I've found is by going to a ton of events and reading a lot of books and following, you know, gurus of the kind that you speak of, which, which have helped me in my life. But I think the separation there is a lot of people are just looking for information. They're looking to hear how they can make a change. They're looking to hear the next craze, the next pattern, you know, the next big thing. And they just learn, learn, learn. They've got notebooks of notes. They go to seminar after seminar. 
but they don't do right. They don't take action on what they've learned. What do you believe is the main reason why people don't take action towards the changes and the transformation that they want to make? There's a couple things. Um, I actually teach this in my energy triad system, this whole process to, to get to the point where you do take action and, and how to do it. One of the big things is people are terrified. They're terrified um, of when you're in this mode of being a seeker, when you're in this mode of like, I got to figure out all the problems and mysteries of life. It's engaging to your mind. It's like, well, this is wow, you know, quantum physics. No one, no one even knows what the fuck quantum. Even quantum, <laughs> like, I've had two quantum physicists in my training. And they're like, we don't even know what the fuck quantum physicists, is, quantum Literally. physics. Is. So come on, man, stop with this bullshit. They, they get so annoyed with all the all the stuff people do with that. But they're, they're like, oh, it's mystical wonder. But it engages your mind, and you feel, you know, from that the the chem- I mean, because all we are is biochemical machines, right? Biomechanical, biochemical machines. You feel that something's happening. You feel. There's progress being made. You feel good. You feel like alive. You feel engaged with life. People are terrified to lose that feeling, not understanding. It's like, I'm tired. I can't go to the gym. That's exactly why you need to go to the gym. It's, it's kind of a reverse thing, but they're terrified. They're terrified of, feel, of, 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 uh, of, of losing that feeling, of feeling alive. Um, and intuitively, we know that happens. Um, the, the other thing is that they're just not, this is going to be, see, this is almost a little bit woo-woo, but it's not. It's actually science-based stuff. So there's three primary energy systems that we have, our mental, emotional, and physical energy systems. And the the mental one's easy. You can like daydream and your mind creates your life. You can daydream and all these things. The emotional one's pretty easy for a lot of people. Um, you can just feel good and feel feel the vibes, and blah, whatever. Those things, people are really good at those things. But the the physical, the do part, you're right. They don't. They're not good at that. And it's generally because these two things aren't really aligned, and they're fighting each other. Your your security team and your dreamer, right? They're they're like, oh, let's do this whimsical, magical thing. This is like, no, that's not safe. And so it it goes into this, this battle. They're not actually connected. They're not actually like working together as they're designed to work together. They're fighting each other. So you're like. I'm just going to be very pragmatic and logical. And your heart's like, this is boring. Does someone shoot me in the head? Cause this is terrible. You know, your emotional energy, but then the other side of it's like, Oh my God, this is amazing and bright and fluffy and wonderful and sparkly. And your mind's like, this is no, this is not. So that battle, that battle just destroys people because it requires this and this to be together and on the same page. And when that happens, it actually creates what's called activation energy, which mm. is a scientific term. It's a scientific thing like bio, biologic, bio, biologically biology (laughs) it's in biology and when that happens you don't have much of a choice to take action everybody's felt this when you get so inspired and this and this oh my god it links up holy shit i gotta call this person i gotta do this thing i gotta write this thing i gotta do i gotta do something you get so excited and so inspired that you have to take action because there's too much energy it has to go someplace so it turns into action and then you're taking action not effortlessly there is no effortless nothing nothing's effortless it always takes effort but it it's it's more of a uh, an empowered action so it doesn't feel like dutiful and grueling and ugh, like it's sludgy or whatever and then when you do that you complete that circuit of your mind heart and body your mental emotional and physical energy and that's when it like it's like plugging in a a, a circuit you light up and then that whole process starts to unfold. And that's when people are like, holy shit, what is this? Like, it's you. You're the power. Great. Good for you. Wait, congratulations. So that was a long answer to a short question. But I love that. I never heard of activation energy. So I, I'm very curious. I'm going to look more into this too with, with what you do and your content. With activation energy, let's say I'm somebody who wants to lose weight, earn more money, develop an amazing relationship, whatever it might be. In a nutshell, like thousand foot view, if I came to you and said, Mike, I'm really struggling here, man. You know, I want to do these things, but I'm afraid I'm going to fail. I'm terrified of taking action, right? I'm not in congruence, my my body, my spirit, that energy. How would you then guide me towards that activation energy? So again, simple is superior because simple is something we can all grasp onto. So um, a lot of people have this idea that it has to be some complex, intricate, like just crazy thing. It's not, it's not. So I, I, the first thing we need to find out is what the hell do you actually want? Not what Gary Guru says you should have or the, the influence say you should be. You gotta have the Lambo and the thing. Whatever. No, no, most people don't even want that. It's just like, that's what we're supposed to have. We should do that. <laughs> and they go through life and like, no, you should want what you want. So we go through the first process of what do you actually want? And, and how do you find that? Because it's a simple question. What do you want? 
But man, that question's hard for people to answer. Yes. Like, they go, cra- right? You've seen that they go crazy. They're like, and it's like people cry and they break down and they go have like anxiety <laughs> attacks and stuff. Like, just, I'm just asking what you want. Like, you want a turkey <laughs> sandwich or do you want a bologna sandwich? Like, come on, take it easy. But it, it, it is a simple question, but it's it's a process to get to really to get drill down to what you want because there's so much noise and you should have this and you should be a straight A student. You should go to college. You should be a millionaire. You should be a minimalist, blah, 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 blah. There's so much noise that people, and no one really ever asks, hey, what do you want? What what do you want from your life? It's like, here's what you should do for to be a, a good pillar of societal uh, contribution. Like, but I don't really want that, right? So I would say, whatever it is we're, we're working on, what do you want? And they'd, be, and they'd probably be like, I don't want this and I want that. Great. So obviously the path of least resistance is let's just go with what you don't want because you're going to answer that anyway. I've seen it for mm-hmm. 30 years, right? So what, okay, fine. Let's just go on a bitch session. Let's just it, feel free. This is it. Like dump it, man. Go. What? Tell me everything that sucks about your life. <clears throat> Excuse me. Go list it out. And people like what, especially in personal development, like, no, I can't be negative or the negative attraction is going to come steal my soul. (laughs) It's it's not, it's not, you're going to, this, this process, this is, this is the first step in the power manifesting method. It's, it's literally an exercise in duality. You go Mm -hmm. through and it's like, what, what don't you want? Because, you know, that's easier to identify. So it's, it's, it starts the engine, it starts the process, starts the motion, starts to get the momentum. And then it's really simple from that point, you go all the things, let's say you focus on weight loss. What don't you like? What don't you want about it, about being overweight or out of shape or whatever? It's all these things. And you go, okay, that's the one, one, something's going to stick out. Okay. That's the one. So it's like, I can't play basketball with my grandkids or my children or whatever, my friends anymore. I can't do anything active. And I hate that. I want to be active. Cool. That's it. So when you go, what's the heads, the tails of that thing? I want to be active. I want to go play basketball. I want to be, have enough energy and enough strength and enough health and flexibility, all these things to go be with my friends, which it it almost always comes back to connection, right? It always, Mm -hmm. always, always comes back to connection and in some way, shape or form. Okay. That's it. That's what we're, that's, that's your target. So that's what we do. One target, one thing, one thing, but we focus on one thing and that's it. Once that target's set, then the rest of the processes can come into play and you can get there. It's this path that gets there every time. Um, but it's the, the, what I would say is thousand foot view is like, let's figure out what the hell you actually want. Not what you people you think you should want. That's the biggest thing, man. People who like, I think I'm supposed to want this because everybody says that. Like, that's not, that's not what you want, though. So that's the big thing. And then once you have that, because you can't hit anything if you don't have a target you're just like i'm gonna go here here shiny object another shiny object and you and people get lost in that in that that hustle that shuffle you know of all that stuff yes yeah and, and like you just said i feel that people get stuck in the same thing that they've been doing day in day out year in year out stay at a job for 20 30 years retire hopefully they can retire hopefully they can now have the time to spend with their grandchildren or whatever it is they want to do and it's just the same thing it's that's why they call it the rat race right you're on the rat wheel rather than actually ask yourself all these years ago well what do i want what does the perfect day look like for me you know what emotions do i want to be experiencing more often throughout these days who are the people that i want to spend time around like you said you ask people what they want they don't really have a good answer to it right and you've created an entire methodology in a sense by accident like you didn't put a name on the power life principles you did but only after you use them and then i i listened to what you said in the past you said a, a marketing friend of yours said well hey we, we got to get this out to the world right and we, we got to put a name on it we got to package this up nicely so it's accepted but you've been doing this for years and you said you've been doing this for three decades right mm-hmm. yeah okay yeah. Well, you know, I, I've always struggled in the past. Whenever people ask me what I did in this field, I'd be like, well, you know, we're a media company. We help people improve their lives. We help people create goals. Like when people ask you to this day, Mike, like around the campfire or whatever it is, you're going to an event. Like, what do you do, Mike? Like, what do you tell people? What do you do? Who do you help? That's still the hardest question for me to ask. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. Do you have a pulse? Cause, cause, cause we're all, we're all human and we all have desires and we all go through the, we all get like lost in the darkness sometimes, whatever. But really, um, if, if I were to sum it up, it, it literally is not, not empowerment, but self-empowerment. I help you find a way where you can, where you can use the faculties and functions of your own systems in your own body, where you can 
self empower. So you don't need all this external shit to like, oh, I got to go out and do this and do that. But you really don't. You can use that to augment some of your your power, some of your energy, that kind of stuff. But the core is always you. It always. I mean, I have this like this, if you can see this, like you are the power on my little water job. Cool. It's always you, you know? And so when you get to the point where you understand that, like, oh, I am the power. It's not something out there. It's not this, it's me. And everything's filtered and coming through me and all the creation process is going through me and all the thoughts are mine and the feelings are mine and all this stuff. Um, I, I would say that it's, it's about self-empowerment. And the way that I would describe that is like, you don't need a crutch but you, 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 we all need this. We all need to have a spotter. So, so empowerment is not about lifting weights for people. It's about mo being a cheerleader for them to lift their own weight and pushing them, you know, past their own, like, Oh, I can't lift it. It's too heavy. Bullshit. Grit your teeth and grunt. You can too. Oh my God, I can. It, it's that part of it. And it's being there to spot them just a little bit while they're lifting the weight. That's empowerment. It's not like, let me sh let me show you how amazing I am and how gifted and omnipotent and enigmatic I am as a look at the fuck. No, this is about how good you can become. And, and that's what empowerment is. And that's kind of what the power life principles and processes do for people. It just kind of naturally kind of automatically makes people f understand that, see that, feel that and extract that and live from that place. When you say you are the power you are the energy. Like when people say to you, I don't have the energy to do that. You know, I, I feel drained. Like when you say you are the power, what exactly does that even mean? What, what is power the way that you define it? Power is the, uh, the ability to control the faculties that create your life. Um, your mind, no one thinks your thoughts for you. People can try to implant thoughts, but you can reject them and you can all, you can alchemize them into something else. You can take a thought and say, this inherently is meaningless. I'm going to make it mean this shit because it helps me move <laughs> what I want in my life. Right. You have that ability. You have the power of perspective. You can look at anything and go, you know, I, I talk about this. Someone, someone, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you this real quick. Someone said, okay, smart guy. If, if everything's, everything's a resource based on your perspectives, how can, how can I lose weight with a dozen donuts? I'm like, okay, challenge accepted. So I said, here's what you do. You go put on your gym shoes and you go to the table, you open up that badass box of Krispy Kremes and like, look at those gooey, delicious bastards. And you want them just like, so oh, these are delicious. And you take one and you're like, yes, you smell it. Oh my God, this is so good. But you don't eat it. You run to the furthest garbage can you can find and slam dunk that bitch in there with like some symbolic gesture of like victory and do that shit 11 more times. You just use a dozen donuts to lose weight. Everything can be a resource to support you. You have this power perspective to turn it into that. If you learn how to use it, it's a muscle. You have to strengthen it by using it. So power is just the faculties to, to think and feel and do what you want to do to create and build and fuel an external environment that matches like kind of your default energy signature on, on your internal environment. When those two things match, you're winning at life. You're winning, totally winning at life. So the power really is just that everything comes through you. It's not about tools. People give so much credence to tools like release, med meditation, blah, 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 all these things, which they augment, they help, but they're not the power. Have you ever seen a saw cut a board? No, it's a human operating a saw cutting a board, <laughs> right? It, 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 tool, tools aren't the power you are you are everything that all these tools and stuff like i had the most powerful thing no it's you it's always you like a hammer doesn't swing itself and pound a nail it's a human doing it these meditation meditation doesn't just happen it's going through you you're doing it somehow some way whether you're going into some trance staring at a leaf or doing some other weird shit whatever it's always you always comes back to you it comes back down to principle one highest energy wins it always comes back down to you. So that's what I mean when I say you're the power. That's super powerful, man. And I like how you said it's a muscle that you use and you get better at it. This is why people who have eliminated, you know, Krispy Kreme from their diet are now able to look at the box of Krispy Kreme and say, oh, I remember those days, right? Oh, I would love to eat one of those. It would taste amazing. But the meaning that I attach to them is, well, that's going to make me fat if I eat that, right? It's going to bring me back to where I was before. So 
it sounds to me, based on what you said, that power is, in, in a way is synonymous to meaning, right? We've all got these thoughts, but it's the meaning that we attach to those thoughts that determines what we do. We've got the box of donuts in front of us. It's the meaning of, well, I can lose weight by taking these and chucking them in the garbage can versus the meaning of, well, I'll just have one more and tomorrow I'll start the diet that I'm on. <laughs> it's almost in a sense, a choice that you get better at and get stronger at making the more that you do it. Absolutely. Yep. And that's one of the power life principles is about decisions because no one ever teaches us how to make decisions. It's weird. It's weird. Like you get, here's what you get to choose from. Here's your options. It's kind of like a forced choice instead of like the whole thing of what you actually want. But um, decisions are the only thing that, and, and what's a decision? Again, people like, yeah, I made a decision. No, you didn't. Uh, you know what? The, the decision is actually only a decision if there's something you can not undo after that. So you ordered a turkey sandwich. You made a decision. You can't undo the fact that you ordered a turkey sandwich. You can't undo the fact that you jumped off the high dive. You made a decision. But when you're at the edge of it thinking, I'm going to do this. I just decided. Nope. You didn't decide anything until you actually do it. And that, and that's the whole thing. But that that is part of it. It's like the, the, that power is just using your faculties. It's about decisions. It's about perspectives. It's about um, awareness. It's, I mean, it's the power line principles. That's what it is. It's the whole thing. So it's just, it's kind of, a, it's kind of amazing when people get to experience that sometimes for the first time in their lives, I've seen people like break down in tears because they, because they, they, they've met themselves and, it, yeah. and it, it's, it's amazing. I mean, it, it's, it's just, it's such, such a privilege to be able to like be a part of that and an honor, you know, in, in people's lives. Sometimes, sometimes people don't, sometimes they just like, everything sucks and you suck and everything the world like okay you're not you're not ready to 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 go get be helped or enhance your life because you have to you can't help someone who's not going to help themselves you know absolutely i like uh, let's take that i want to talk about your story but i i want to touch on what you just said because that's very powerful i come to you and i say to you mike I've got two decisions in front of me that I could make, two separate roads that I could go down, very different roads, both roads that would have a great outcome, right? As an example, let's say, Mike, I want to go all in on my business, right? I want to build my business, continue building my own thing from the foundation up, or I could go work for this company in a high level position, acquire more skills so that I could take those to my business in the future. Both have great outcomes, but they're a very different path. How would you consult or guide somebody in a situation like that to go down one of those two roads? What would you recommend to that person to make a decision? <laughs> so here, here, here's if, if you haven't noticed yet, I kind of speak in metaphors, but here's here's <laughs> how here's how I would I would say that you live in the most amazing amusement park that exists, Earth, the world, our life. It's like uh, every damn ride you could possibly imagine. And you have a VIP pass to the everything. You can do whatever you want. Every experience is out there for you. Um, but you can't ride every, every one of them at the same time. You can't ride the roller coaster and the teacups at the same time. You have to ride one at a time. So which one, just instinctively, whatever, I don't care, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. put the shit in a hat, pull it out, because you can't make a wrong decision with those choices, with those options. It won't be wrong. It doesn't matter what you do. Just decide and then go all in and go forward, and you're going to feel fulfilled. You're going to get the benefit from it. What ride do you want to ride first? What ride do you want to ride most? Because just because you rode the roller coaster doesn't mean teacups go away. They're still going to be there. There's always going to be that stuff. Everything's still here. So it's you can't lose. There's not there's not a bad decision, a bad option. If you need to have a thing, flip a coin. I don't care. It's like and people are like what? Yeah, yeah, really, because no matter what you do with those two options, if they're both good and they both like serve you and they both serve a purpose in your life. You, you, you can't choose wrong. So who cares? doesn't matter what you want more. What, what do you want to ride more? What, you know, I wouldn't go through all the pros and cons lists. I literally would go from right here. What is it? Like what, you look at the roller coaster and go, holy shit, or teacups and go, wow, which one's more intense, which is the highest energy, not frequency. I mean, that whole thing, amplitude, what has more volume in your systems? What is it that does? It? And if they're equal, doesn't matter. Just literally flip a coin and pick one you're, and, you're, and you're on your way and you're going to do very well in life and you're going to be fulfilled and happy and have success and joy and wonder and resources and all the things that people want in life. That's a great answer, man. I appreciate you you're going into that because you're absolutely right. Just pick a path, go all in on that path, right? Don't dabble in both. Don't continue to think, continue to meddle. Just go all in. Absolutely. 
let's talk about the power life principles. We've, we've kind of dabbled in them a bit so far, but these things don't just come to you, right? They come through pain. They come through tribulation. They come through a powerful story, which is what I'm sure started you on this path in the first place. So who was Mike Kemsky as, well, who were you in high school? <laughs> Um, you, I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I mean, I, I, I and, and so when I, at 16, I checked myself into rehab, that's high school. And, um, and, and I don't remember a lot of it. I was just trying to figure out how to survive. And, and I was a mess and I was like messed up inside. And I didn't, I, I didn't know who I was. I didn't know who I was. I mean, I, I kind of lost that as a kid growing up. Um, cause who I am and what I am, I'm, I'm really, I mean, I look a little bit burly, but I'm like the super sensitive, like highly connected to nature guy. And, and um, I'm kind of like, I have a huge heart and all this stuff. So that's why I have the shell because it has to protect me because I'm such a gooey inside. But, <laughs> but uh, you know, it, I, I didn't know who I was in high school because all that stuff was kind of lost in this shuffle of life uh, because of how I lived. Um, mm. It wasn't, it wasn't until later that I'm like, started to remember like here, here I am, you know, this is who I am. Gotcha. So I, don't know. I don't know. I don't know how to answer that. Yeah. So, okay. So tell me, I mean, I can't even imagine what it takes to check yourself into rehab, especially when you're still trying to figure out life. What did that journey look like for you? Like what, how did you even compel yourself to make that decision? Because at that point, you don't have all these principles, right? You're still figuring things out. We're always figuring things out. How did you find that place of strength in you to do something that's going to benefit your life like that at that point in your life? Uh, are you ready for this? <laughs> um, I don't talk about this much. Um, so I mean, get, get you, you have to frame it to the, get to this point. So at, uh, at age 12, I started drinking and doing drugs because it was magic elixir that took all the pain away. It took like, Oh my God, this stuff's magical shit. I take this stuff. And I'm like, wow, I don't, I have no more like, uh, inhibitions. I have no, I don't feel like a piece of shit. I don't feel like a loser. I don't feel like a complete waste of space and that breathing other people's oxygen. This is great. The pain would start to go away, you know, and it worked. I worked brilliantly for until it didn't. But, um, so, so, at, so I started doing drugs and, 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 and drinking and just whatever I could at age 12 pills and all the crap until, um, three months before my 17th birthday. And there's a reason way back that I'll happen, but let's just get to the point for rehab. Cause that's the question that you asked. So three months before my 17th birthday, the, the drugs and alcohol kind of stopped working. Um, it was actually causing more pain through numbness and a disconnection from connection, from life, from people, from humanity. And, you know, that's nature's a self-correcting system. So you get too far one or the other, it's going to bring you back into the, the zone where we can actually create and live. Mm. And so that pain was just like on both ends of the spectrum. Now I'm like, fuck, nothing's working. And, and I, I just, uh, like, I, I don't know. I mean, Oh, whatever. I'm just going to go into it as I just don't talk about this much. So I was in my, my room and I'm looking around and there's all these like beer cans and, and cigarette full cans of like whatever soda and drug paraphernalia, just a shit show. It was gross, gross. Like, and I'm looking around, I'm like, all right, whatever. And, and I, I didn't know what to do or how to do it. I'm 16. I'm like, what, how do you, how do you, how do you check out a life? Mm. So I went, and, <laughs> I went and got a razor blade and I stuck, <laughs> I stuck it in my wrist and I'm listening to Metallica sanitarium over and over and over again. Like the, like just, it's a crazy environment, uh, weird, but I put this razor blade in my wrist and I dig it in there and, and pierce my skin and everything go, uh, this is weird, man. Everything goes, um, quiet, silent. And, um, I, I didn't hear a voice like Mike, blah, 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 blah. It wasn't any bullshit like that, but I heard some, a voice talking to me. It might've been myself. I don't know what the hell it was. But everything went quiet and it said, Mike, I know you don't know what love is, but this is what it feels like. And my body is flooded with this crazy. I'm like, what the, what is it? I mean, if anybody's ever fallen in love or feels love or had a kid, that's what it was. Like when I had it, when I had my daughter, I'm like, this is the same feeling I felt back then. And so my whole body filled with this feeling and, and you know, and, I'm, and I'm, I got tears running down my face and it said, I know you don't know what love is, but this is what it feels like. And this is not your path. You'll find, I didn't say this is not your path. So this, you'll find this in serving, serving man, women, humankind, whatever. This is, this is what you are meant to do, um, to find this feeling, to create this feeling. And this is, this is what, uh, this is what it feels like. This is how you do it. 
And then there's blood leaking down my hand and it kind of brought me back to reality and I kind of snapped out of it. I'm like, what the hell was that, man? And, and I still felt that, that like that embrace, that warmness, whatever it was. I don't know. I felt love. I felt it was love. And um, like, not, not like hardcore Aztec in love, but the tender kind of love that like you feel protected and safe. And I was like, shit. And I, I got to go to, I got to, I got to, I got to fix my life. I got to do something. Cause like, now I know, now I know, and I can't deny that. Whether it was yeah. some weird like acid flashback or something, I don't know. Like, what but, do you believe? It looking back now, what do you believe that was based on like what you believe that that voice, that that feeling and emotion? Like, what was that? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. I I mean, people say it's God. People say it's whatever you know, divine intervention. Um, but I but I do know that uh, it, it was it was my voice. It was my voice. Wow. And so it was like my voice as, as a, as a, as a man, as I am today. So wow. who knows, who knows, man, I don't know what it was. I mean, I can't, I don't profess to know, and I'm not even going to try to say, well, <laughs> let me explain the intricacies of how the, I don't know, it, but I know what happened. Right. So, so then I, I said, I gotta, I gotta change something. So I, <laughs> I called this rehab center and this lady, this poor lady, this nurse, her name was Sheila. And I called and she's like, Davis hospital recovery center. So Sheila, can I help you? And I'm like, click. I mean, I'm scared to death. I'm 16. I don't know what to, to say, what to do. I don't know what, how to, I don't know what, what do I do? What do I say? And so I call her back and I kept calling this poor lady. And I didn't say a word till finally she answers the phone. She's like, are you going to talk to me? I'm like, yes. Oh shit. <laughs> he scared me into like responding. Cause I didn't expect that. Right. And, and so she's like, Hey, I'm like, hi. And she goes, what's going on? You know? And I'm like, I think I need some help. Mm. How old are you, sweetie? I'm like, I'm 16. She's like, well, this isn't, and this is, she, this is where I lived was a kind of a smaller town at the time. And she said, this is a court ordered um, rehab for, for adults, but uh, we have a bed and you can come depending on like, if you have like, where, where did your parents work? Whatever. My, my dad's in the military. Um, so she's like, yeah, you could, that insurance will work. So you can come. I'm like, okay. And she goes, but you have to have your parents sign you in. I'm like, shit. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I go, so I hang up with her. I'm like, okay, I'll be there. I'll be there as soon as I can. You know, I'm like, I'm done. I'm going to go to this thing and, and change my life or at least try to. And, um, and so I go upstairs and my, and my mom's watching QVC. She's watching like a shopping channel. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, mom. And then you have to know like the history. It's, it, it's funny to me and to people that know me and know my history and know her and knew her or whatever. But um, I'm like, mom, I, I, I didn't talk to you. Um, I just called a rehab center and I got a drug problem and I'm going to check myself into rehab. I need you guys to check me in, sign me in. She's like, I'm watching QVC. God damn it. Go call your dad. Don't bother me. Like, you, you, what the fuck? I mean, it's just to, it's, if I heard that now, I'd be like, I'd be appalled at that person, but to me, it's funny <laughs> because of how thing. So I'm like, oh my God, I don't want to call him. So I, I got to call my dad. And he's he's like, he goes to work for like five days at a time, whatever, in the military and lives up there. And mm -hmm. so I call him and he actually answered the phone. He's like, Master Sergeant Kemsky. And I'm like, Dad, what? I'm like, God, it's so scary. And I'm like, hey, I, I just called this hospital, you know, and I told him, and I'm like, I got I got a drug problem and I need some help and and I got to go to rehab, but you guys got to check me in, you know, so, so, so I know you're, but work mom's gotta do it and he's like quit being a pussy boom hung up i'm like okay now what do i do i don't know what to do now so i do what any resourceful drug addict would do and i lied <laughs> i went and told my mom said dad said that you need to sign me into this thing and i didn't know they i knew they wouldn't talk they were wow. miserable shit i'm like dad said you need to sign me into this thing she never got her license so i'm like get in the car i'll take you and 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 we'll go so i took her to the hospital had her sign the paperwork and i checked myself into rehab at, at, at age 16. And that was like a, it, and I'm, I'm assuming that was like a 20 day or a month long program. So, so you go, you go through this program, right? And now you come out, you're still 16, 17 years old. What does your life look like after that? And where did the discovery of these power life principles come from? So, yeah, so I did the, I did the thing, the 21 days I, you know, I, and I could have left whenever I wanted to the people that hated me, man. Cause they're like all these old dudes that had to be there. Cause the court ordered, I'm like, I can go whatever I want. <laughs> <I'm 16." laughs> so it was like crazy. But, um, but I did the thing I got out and I just, I followed their thing, you know, the 12 steps and the, the meetings and the people and, and man, I, I just got to the point where I was like, there's more to life than just coming to these rooms twice a week and smoking cigarettes and drinking 12 pots of coffee and bitching about our lives. There's more than this. And so, you know, but it took a couple of years to get to that point. 
And, and at that point, um, a lot of things happened. My counselor and my girlfriend, like kind of like start hooked up and behind my back. And just a lot of things that I trusted, which were not a, not a lot of things at all. Very little things, very wow. few things, um, just started to come unraveled, man. And I'm like, fuck. And, I, and I'm like, you know what? And this is two years into it. And I said, you know what? I've done every damn thing these experts told me to do. I've done it diligently. I've went to the meetings. I've done the steps. I've done the thing, whatever. And it helped. It helped. It did help. But it wasn't doing much more than just like keeping me away from living that kind of lifestyle anymore. It wasn't, it wasn't expanding me. It wasn't, I never felt anything happen, you know, growing inside of me to become more expansive to get what I talked about at the first of this out, that thing, I know there's something in there. Why can't I get this? It didn't, it wasn't doing that. And so I'm like, this is bullshit. And so my counselor had sex with my girlfriend and that kind of thing. And I'm like, these are the only two people I trust in the world. What? A, and, and so it was just crazy. Yeah. And, and then, uh, so, so two years into it, my life hadn't changed much, but I didn't have any drugs or alcohol anymore. And I told myself I'd never do that again to escape my, my problems of life. Cause I know it doesn't work anymore. And so I'm like, this is, this is where we're going to get into the, the, the meat of the story. Cool. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of just wandering around. I ended up homeless and living in my car for a little while. And, um, in, and that was fun, scary, but not, not fun. It wasn't fun. I'm being facetious. It was scary. And it was like a little bit tough, but, but I'm glad I did it. Um, because it helps me relate to people who be, are in that situation. I'm glad I had that experience. It, hmm. but, so that happened. And then I got to the point where I was kind of just, um, you know, floating around from place to place, not really, didn't have a lot of success or structure in my life. I was just kind of like a, a, a drifter. And, um, I was at the, uh, uh where I lived at the time, there were some people there that were avid hunters and they were kind of house sitting while my friend's mom was uh, deployed in the military. And we used to go to Denny's all the time. Cause that's where we could go with a dollar and drink coffee endlessly and <laughs> tip the poor waitress like 12 cents and smoke cigarettes all night. Cause you could smoke in the thing <laughs> when I smoked, you know, so we just go and they hated us. We'd come in there like, fuck these guys. Cause we'd, we'd spend like three bucks and like just sit there all night and drink coffee and smoke cigarettes ridiculous but my friends came over like hey you want to go to denny's whatever i'm like no i'm good tonight i'm good i don't want to go or today whatever that evening and um i'm gonna kind of go through this a little bit quicker because i it's just yeah i mean you, you can show people where they yeah. can watch the real story because that's why i recorded it so i don't have to talk five thousand more times but yeah sure um, so I, I I'm sitting in this in the, I'm in this house and I'm just like thinking I did everything you told me to do I followed the experts' advice I did the steps I was diligent about it but I am still dead I'm still dying inside I still feel like crap I still feel pain and I mean people are still assholes and the, the world still sucks and what's going on here like there's this big promise of like this better life but what the hell I followed you guys' stuff doesn't doesn't really doesn't really work for that for that stuff and so I'm like confused. I'm scared. I'm terrified. I'm, I'm no one really knows my past. Um, no one really knows the shit I went through. No one really knows any of that stuff yet. And, and I, all my friends got sober with me and most of them were back doing drugs and drinking again. Um, mm. we all got sober on the same time. So I'm like, well, this is crazy. And I don't, it, it was just to set the stage. It was the most chaotic vortex of like powerful confusion and fear and hurt and, and just a, an overload of, of emotional energy that was, driving me to a point where I didn't know what to do. Yeah. And, and I was utterly alone and, and I was, I didn't have anybody to call. I didn't have, I mean, my counselor, my girlfriend who I would have talked to, I'm like, I'm not talking to them. And, and so I, I, I end up on the, on the bed in the master bedroom and I, I put, I'm just feeling all this stuff. I put my, my elbows on my knees and my face and my hands. And I just started bawling my face off. I started crying and I'm like, you know, I don't, I don't know what to do. And I want to do something, but I don't know what to do. And I look under the bed and there's a 357 Magnum. Mm. And so I, I just, <laughs> the first thought I had is like, fuck this. If this is life, I want my money back. I mean, I did everything. I, I, I'm, I can't live like this. This is like stupid. Why would anybody want to? And so I grabbed the gun and I, I pull the hammer back and I'm looking at this gun and I stick it in my mouth the barrel in my mouth and I'm shaking and I'm crying and I'm terrified and it's a cold and it tastes like gunpowder. And I, I, I got snot. I'm, I'm hysterical at this point. I don't know what to do. And I'm like, and this is how bad my self-esteem was. I'm like, and I've been sober for two years at this time. 
I said, if I do this, someone's gonna have to clean up my brains off the back of the wall. My dad was right. I am a piece of shit. I don't even deserve to live. This is what's going through my head with a fucking loaded gun in my mouth. And I look up, I look up at the door and I'm like, someone please come in here. Someone come in here and just tell me it'll be okay. You know, because I I didn't care. Oh, fuck. I didn't care who it was. I didn't care if it was some strung out crackhead, like, hey, it'll be okay. You got some crack. I don't care what it is. <laughs> someone come in and tell me it'll be okay. I don't care. Just someone tell me, please, for God's sake, someone tell me this is going to be okay because I can't live like this for nine more, 90 more years, nine more years, eight more years, five more minutes. Why? Why? Why would you want to? This is life. This is stupid. I had never known that there was something else, something more because I'd never really experienced it. So I didn't know. I was just in this dark place of like, this is bullshit. This is life. Mm -mm. So I'm I got this gun in my mouth and I'm squeezing the trigger and my eyes are closed and I'm shaking. I'm uh, tearing up a little bit right now. And I wasn't sure if I was going to do it. And then boom, I pulled the trigger and the hammer dropped and I opened my eyes and I'm like, am I dead? I don't know what being dead's like. I've never been dead before. I don't know if this is whatever. Am I dead? And I pulled this gun out of my mouth and I'm like, I feel my head and I'm like, what the fuck? Holy shit. You know? And so I, I look at the gun and the primer on the bullet was defective and the bullet didn't fire. Mm. So I throw it and I scurry away from it as fast as I can, terrified, overwhelmed with more emotional energy now. And, and, and I hit my head on the back of the wall. I'm like, now my head hurts. That's kind of ironic because I was like getting away from this gun. I slammed my head. I'm like, shit. And then I sit on this bed, just trembling out of control until, until I, uh, hang on. Until I uh, I got enough composure to get up, just to stand up. I couldn't even stand up. I was completely overloaded with so much stuff, as you can imagine, and adrenaline and fear. I mean, just it was, God, it was it was intense. And then I got up and I started walking, man. I started walking, 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 walking. That's all I could do. That's all I could do at the time is just walk. And I walked for I don't know how long. I don't know. It was 10, 20 miles. I don't know, five minutes or five hours. I don't even know. I mean, I was so messed up. I don't even know. But... I ended up being it was like dusk and and where I where I was at there was a old billboard on the highway and I don't know why but this the, they used to have these incandescent lights and they get all shitty and it was it was a bad part of town so nothing's really maintained they get all shitty and covered with crap and the, the the light turns like kind of orange this orange hue and so I look up and I see this orange light shining on this billboard it was something from like a tire store or something I don't know what the hell it was and and that orange light just like gave me a focal point because I was just all over the place and that that and it could have been any a purple light it doesn't matter the color but the, the light I was looking at this light and it gave me a focal point and I stopped and I just looked at this light and I'm like mm -mm, mm -mm. and I literally looked around at this shitty ass ghetto neighborhood I was in <laughs> there was nothing really great there but I looked around and I looked through all that and I said Mike there everything you want in life is out there mm. family love success confidence joy wonder awe money toys adventure everything's out there man and my biggest dream at that time you know was to build a family i'm like i want a family i want a family that i can love that can love me and 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 i never thought i could have that um <clears throat> i didn't know i could have that or any of this stuff because i'd never i've been on the other side for so long trapped in that darkness and i literally looked around and said "Fuck that if it's it's out there you've seen people have this stuff and if it's out there you can get it and I took a step, a physical step to the side, and I looked at this echo of myself, and I said, you just killed the man that pulled that trigger and gave birth to this guy. Wow. I'm like, who is he? I'm like, who is he? I don't know. I'm the same asshole I was five seconds ago. I don't know. But I made a decision to go out in this world and figure out how this works, my mind works, my heart works, my body works, how we work as human beings. Figure it out. Change this shit. Transform your life or die trying because you're on borrowed time now, dude. Go do it. And I, that set me on this quest to go figure all this stuff out. I had no idea there were people that taught this stuff or books or shit. I literally like picked up rocks and poked sticks at shit. Like, how did all this work? Poke sticks at my mind. What does that do? What does this do? And it was grueling. It was a grueling process for a lot of years. But um, over time, I, I started to figure out how we work. And we all work the same. I mean, it's a different experience. But the function of how we work is the same for all of us, which yeah. became the power life principles. Um, over time, you know, I didn't have names for any of this stuff at the time. I was just kind of like, 
well, this is this, this is that. And then over time I started to name them. And, and then my friend, you know, like you talked about said, dude, we have to market this. We have to get this out to the world. I'm like, what are you talking about? So that whole thing, but over time, that's what became the power life principles is that, that whole thing. So what a story. Ooh. I appreciate you going, you know, deep into that story and the, the vulnerable moments and the moments that really defined who you are and why you've become who you are. And I think it's incredible how you were in the in your in your bedroom with the razor blade before then, right? Before rehab and before all of that. And you heard that voice. You heard the mature voice of Mike Kemsky just saying those things that they said. And that made you say, okay, well, maybe there's something more here for me. And you made the decision to go into rehab. And then later on, you you bumped into more of these challenges even after you ditched drugs. And once again, that force came into play that pretty much told you in a way you didn't say it, but it told you you've got more to do. Like yeah. you've got a mission that still has to be fulfilled and you listened to it. And then you made a decision on that point and it's brought you to where you were today. My question would be if you did walk, if, if you could go back and young Mike Kemsky is there. It might might be you. It might not be you. It might be someone else going through this situation. And you did walk through the door and you see them there with the gun. What would you even say to somebody who's in that situation in the heat of the moment about to pull that trigger? I would say I'm not here to take anything away from you. I'm here to help you and support you in feeling the pain that you're feeling right now. You're not alone. It will be okay. You're safe. You're safe to feel this stuff right now. I'm not going to take it away. This has function and purpose for you, but I'm here. I'm here with you. I got your back. I will hold you. I will carry you. I will spot you. I'll do whatever you need to do, but let's feel this. I'm here to help you cry. I'm here to help you be sad. I'm here to help you be scared. Not alone. That's what I would say. That's beautiful advice, man. Beautiful advice. These power life principles, who, who are they really? What's your mission with them? Like in the next five, 10 years, what do you want to accomplish when it comes to these principles and what's your overarching goal? Like, what do you want, Mike? Don't ask, don't, don't Mike me and ask me my question. <laughs> I'm not going to go through all the psychosis, psychosis and bullshit. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, you know, I, I've always wanted the same thing for, I'll go, I'll start there. Um, I, I, for whatever reason, since I was a kid, I just wanted to make an impact in, in people's lives. I think because the pain that I lived in and grew up with and that darkness and knowing that there's a way out now, um, I, I want to make sure that people know that they don't have to choose the way out, but at least know there's a door. I mean, you know, no one can walk through it for you, but if there's a door there, if you know that and you ever want to get out of that darkness and you see, which goes back to what the power life principles are, what they do, you go through the whole process of them. Principle 11 is pass the torch. It's like basically mm. ignite your own heart, ignite your life, ignite yourself, get yourself as bright as you possibly can be, live and fill up as much capacity and potential as you can in your life in this human experience, just in, in the most amazing ways you can. And that's going to illuminate your light, your torch, your whatever, your your presence, your, your energy. And everybody knows that you're drawn. People are drawn to that. Why? Because it gives them visibility. It gives them perspective. It gives them awareness of what's possible for them. And so when you do that, you become this beacon of hope for who knows some, who knows how many people, but when you light up your past, the torch is basically getting, using these principles and processes to get your life as amazing and as great and as fulfilled as you can, because just by default of doing that, whether you have this altruistic view of like, I'm going to save the world or the selfish view, like, fuck the world, I'm going to save me. I'm going to make my, it doesn't matter. The end result's the same. You still have a big ass bright torch and people see that and they go, wow, I'm trapped in the darkness, but way off over there, there's this like glimmer of light and they have a direction, just like the light that I saw on that billboard. It gives them focus It narrows their focus. So their energy becomes more potent and more focused towards that thing. And they will move towards it by naturally we do that we'll move towards life we're trapped in darkness and afraid so the power life principles really are about helping people get to that point so they can help other people get to that point past the torch is the end game of the power life principles to to this is gonna sound a little cheesy but to make a dent in humanity to elevate humanity a little bit by elevating yourself elevating do you, your own do you life. believe that that's the the innate purpose that we share is to make a dent and humanity and to help elevate ourselves, which in turn elevates others. Yeah. I mean, purpose, see, 
the 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 function of it yes purpose i think we all have the same purpose and people are like well no we don't i'm like we do because we're look at us as as like a, a, a machine whatever we're built to create our i mean the first thing we do is procreate to make babies to keep us going but we're built to create that creation whatever that is it could be art it could be food it could be poetry it could be building construct it doesn't matter what it is we're built to create when we create and we're living on purpose that does elevate us and it does you can't be like depressed and messed up and, and all like suicidal whatever when you're in creation mode because you're living on purpose so that 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 innate thing that we have yes is to create is to basically go back to these principles and ignite your own life because then you become a support system for everybody else and when everybody's supporting everybody else just by default, that elevates humanity. It's just, we all uh, become better. Oh man, dude. Ab I can't think of, of, of a better way to, to wrap up this conversation. We're built to create. We're meant to live on purpose so that we can elevate ourselves and therefore pass the torch and help to elevate other people through our own actions and make a difference in the world. What just absolutely incredible. Mike, I know you've you've written books. Tell us about your book. Where can we learn more about you and where can we connect with you? Uh, the the book is a book. It's got a lot of words. <laughs> no, it's 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 a really it's a really simple. Again, this stuff had to be simple for me or I wouldn't have done it. I, you, I told you where I was at. I was at like the like I, I couldn't even think about like making a sandwich. Like so this stuff had to be simple or I wouldn't have been able to do it. So it's very I take these 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 things that are like mystical and complex and all this whatever and i was like nope it's duct tape and bubble gum now we can do it let's go do this shit right that's what i do because i had to do it for me um to learn more you can go get the whole story and i'll talk about all the power life principles and give you all that stuff just go to highestenergywins.com um you can start there you can get the whole the whole story of the the, the gun thing i told some of it but not as I don't want to get all like sobby on this, so I didn't. And then, uh, and then I'll talk about all the principles. You can kind of learn what they are, and that in and of itself will help. You can also get um, uh, I have an uh, audio training course on the Power Life Principles. You can get Highest Energy Wins. That one, people have gone through that one alone. It's changed their life to get it for free. Just go, let it help you. Like get out of the way, and and it will help you if you let it. And if it if you let it, then then do just get let this stuff help you and help you um, kind of get tap into a little bit more of your power, um, kind of change your your perspectives on yourself. And and again, like I say this all the time, like I I, I tell this story and I tell all this stuff and you know I've, I've built a pretty cool life and all that kind of stuff but man this isn't about like look at how awesome i am this is about look how awesome you can become i don't like the the look at how great he is yeah i'm great thank you awesome whatever but 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 so are you and people don't realize that people don't realize how amazing they are um so, so true let's start to let's start to pick apart the, the the shields and shells that block people from actually seeing that um so go to highestenergywins.com and that'll help with that process highestenergywins.com the link is in the description guys go check out mike go check out the the multimedia of the power life principles he's going to give it to you for free go to the website check it out and really dive in there mike it was an incredible conversation thanks for taking the time thanks for sharing what you did and thanks for what you gave us this morning i appreciate yeah, it yeah thanks for having me man it's always fun you're you're awesome too by the way you're you're great <laughs> i love I, we can do this again it's fun yeah absolutely i'll definitely take you up on that thank you mike cool you bet what a conversation. I feel like I say that every time, but we talked about a lot of different things this time. We talked about power. What is power? We talked about your greater purpose, which was one of my biggest takeaways from this entire conversation, how we're built to create, we're built to live on purpose and to pass that torch onto other people. And I think one of the biggest things I took away from this conversation with Mike was our own trials and hardships and challenges are forging us into who we were meant to become. If Mike wasn't in the room that night with the razor blade, if he didn't check himself into rehab, if he didn't have that that ultimatum with the gun that caused him to really change his entire life and create these power life principles, we wouldn't have them. They, they wouldn't even exist. So whatever challenges you're going through, while it, they might seem difficult now, maybe attach a different meaning. What else could it mean? What could this setback be telling you about what the next steps look like for you. And also, don't forget, what do you want? What's your perfect day look like? What direction do you want to go in? Go to highestenergywins.com. The link is in the description wherever you're watching or listening to get 
Mike's free audio multimedia of the Power Life Principles. And again, for all those who want to know how they can best support this Be Better broadcast, share this with one friend who needs to hear Mike's story. Share it with one friend who needs to hear these strategies and principles who you know it will make a difference in their life. Thanks for tuning in. And until we talk again next time, continue to be better.